Hello reformers and welcome back to Pendor. Now we are in front of a mighty battle going on here between the Jatu and Ithilrandir, the Noldor Lord. And of course, I do have a bounty quest as I have been attempting to achieve Grand Master status in the Rangers of the Clarion Call. Now, if we can do this and get a huge amount of rating, which I'm pretty sure we will with 817 units to destroy, then uh, we're going to have a pretty good time of things, hopefully. I have already completed a number of tasks off screen already, so we might be pretty close to the Grand Mastership as it is. And uh, yeah, so about this fight, I'm actually not going to show that much of it. I'm going to show maybe the first round and maybe the second round. It really depends on how exciting or non-exciting exciting it is and uh, then we'll just go from there but yeah for the most part I'm not going to show that much because we've seen quite a few of these fights already and uh, well you know exactly how it goes sometimes we're able to win relatively easily and other times I get shot in the face almost immediately and then I just kind of have to sit back and watch the people do their thing so hopefully I'm going to be able to survive at least one round and whenever I say that you, you know it means business because Every single time I say, yes, I'd like to survive this one round, I end up dying very, very quickly. So let's uh, let's try and prevent that from happening, shall we? And uh, I'm going to try and use my bow a little bit more. Obviously, it's quite difficult to use my bow against Jatu because they are usually very good at avoiding things, usually good at being extremely good in their... Uh, well, should we say retaliation? They're pretty good at retaliating, counterattacking, and so on and so forth. And the cool thing that I am seeing here is that we have... I think maybe we have a little bit too many cavalry. Don't we? Well, whatever the case. I'm going to be placing my archers in a decent enough position, place our halberdiers in a good pla place as well, because bear in mind, the Jatu only have cavalry for the most part. So if they run into our Salian halberdiers, they're going to have some pain. Oh yes, they're going to have a lot of pain coming their way. And uh, yes, uh, this is kind of interesting. Right. Mm, you know, oh yeah, okay, this is, this is fine. This is fine house on fire. This is absolutely fine. No problem. And uh, yeah, I'll just tell my infantry to charge in. Now hopefully my archers will do a decent enough as... Oh yeah, that was nice. That was really, really good. Them taking out that rider just before he got to them. That was really good. Alright. So you can see here that the blue bar in the top right is just... It, it is insane. And that is because of course Ithil Randir has accompanied us in various other endeavors in you know in encounters with the Jatu and he's been able to basically rescue an unlimited amount of units over the period of time that we've been you know helping him out and everything and luring a bunch of unique spawns into him now do bear in mind I'm not going to be luring any Qualys gem awarding people into Ithilrandir because of course you're not able to get a Qualys gem from that fight because obviously Ithilrandir is just very powerful and it would be a little bit imbalanced if you could do that all the time because you basically have a 100% chance I, I would say if you're wanting to achieve victory you basically have a 100% chance to have a friendly relation with the Noldor and there are many mechanisms in place to make that true because you know obviously you start off and they're very aggressive towards you and everything but there's I believe there's three books I think there are three books to give you positive relation with them you have a bunch of quests to give positive relation you can help them and capture them and so on and so forth you can auto resolve to capture them and then release them and so on and that's obviously all tuned to get you friendly with the Nordor and uh, yeah speaking of that actually just as a side note I missed the Nordor tournament this month and I don't exactly know when it happened yeah, but it, it, it happened about like five five or six days ago in game days ago and I think we were at Kelradan Castle doing a siege at that point so that's probably the reason why I neglected to remember it which is not exactly great, i got to say. I would have much preferred to have done the Noldor tournament, but obviously Kelradan Castle, it's a pretty, you know, pretty important, pretty important fief for our family. Or shall we say, 
our wife's family because, well, technically her father is the uh, is the owner of the castle, and I kind of wanted to help him out a little bit. And uh, obviously Lord Andre, he likes us quite a bit as well, and she's obviously his sister, and so it would be kind of. Yeah, kind of useful, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether that's actually going to get us anything in terms of relation or whatever. But I, I, I think just in a thematic role-playing sense, it's kind of a cool thing to do, to uh, try and help out your family in the faction itself. Because you never know. You know, you never know when you're going to leave the faction, and maybe you want to bring as many of your family members with you as possible. You know, I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, for the moment. I am just going to be fighting these Jatu, and you can see I actually did survive. Isn't that amazing? My cloak is now a, well, a, a pretty cool ombre, actually. It's, it's going from, like, dark red to slightly lighter red, and then just fading into the green. And uh, hopefully, we're going to be getting some nice new armor as a result as well. Anyway, there's only 600 enemies remaining, and I'm going to be doing the rest of these rounds off-screen. Alright, so we actually ended up winning that pretty easily. I didn't actually die. It's kind of amazing. Uh, I don't know exactly know why that happened, but, uh, well, I guess uh, staying back behind our archers and actually firing off a couple of arrows for a little bit of time while they absolutely destroy the enemy in every single way may have, you know, contributed to that. Anyway, I have taken all the prisoners that I can. I've rescued all the people that I can. We are now full up in terms of our army capacity, and Ithilrandir now has 3,000 units. He's never going to catch up to anyone ever again, and I would be highly surprised if anyone even has the chance of defeating him, really. He's traveling at what? He's still traveling at 1.9? Is that his minimum speed? Because... Hmm. Okay. Because uh, when he when he had 2,000, he was traveling at 1.9. So maybe he has some kind of minimum speed so that he doesn't become too slow. But uh, that's a little bit weird. I don't think that would be the case. Anyway, 66,000 we gained from that. And I think what I'm actually going to do real quick is go over to 7 Cross Keep and place a whole bunch of units in there. And... I think I'm gonna... I'm, I'm just gonna sort through them, basically. I'm gonna put a anything that's not Dashar and Salian, and anything that's kind of, like, unique and high tier in the garrison here. Alright, so I've just been informed by a message on screen that the Dashar are currently embroiled in a battle at Kelradan Castle once again, and as far as I'm aware, there are many, many units there, and I... I don't think I'm going to... Yeah, you, you can see that right here. They're already in the battle. I don't think I'm going to be able to get there in time because I'm at 7 cross keep. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get there in time. So I'm actually just going to allow them to take Karadan Castle and then maybe I can take it back. It's kind of a bit sad considering what I said earlier in the episode where it's just kind of nice thematically to, you know, keep all of our family's estates intact. But obviously... Sometimes that's just not possible when the enemy force is so incredibly devastating. And I'm pretty sure they had easily over a thousand there. And I know, I know, you know, we defended against over a thousand beforehand, but I didn't really want to take that chance again because that was pretty lucky. And bear in mind, at the moment, I don't have Anson. I don't have Anson with us right now, and there's a reason for that. I actually thought to myself, okay, I'm going to be off screen for a little bit. I'm going to speak to one of, you know, all of my companions, actually, and see which ones I haven't sent off to give me some right to rule. And it turned out that he's the only one that I hadn't sent out. And so I basically sent him out, and I thought to myself, okay, what else can I do here? And so I decided to do, a, a, you know, a couple of uh, knighthood order quests, and uh, they're, they're not usually too dangerous. So, that's generally the reason why I'm doing that. Anyway, there you go. Ah, look at that. We received some clarion gauntlets. Did I did I level up? Did I did I level up? Am I the maximum level? No, I am not the maximum level. Okay, so let me actually uh hmm. I'm actually unsure how I check that. I'm looking for a more challenging task. Am I looking for that challenging task? Not really personally. I feel like that is going to be kind of difficult for us. At the moment, so let's let's actually just take a look at the Clarion Gauntlets here. Thick Clarion Gauntlets, they are not that good. They really are not that good at all. Alright, well, I am going to be taking a little bit of food here. And 
I suppose, uh, you know what we should do? Yeah, we should probably sell up. Actually, no, I put my prisoners in the garrison, didn't I? Yeah, I did that. Okay, so otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to ask, ah, what's this? Ah, there we go, a map to a hidden chest in rain. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool, because when, when we go back there, we will be uh, given a whole bunch of various loot and everything, and I think that's pretty cool. Otherwise, I think what I should do now is I should try, if I can, to find some vassals. Oh, there's one. There's Duke Alamar right there. Okay, well, he's traveling along here, so I'm actually just going to speak to him and ask whether there is any uh, any unique spawn in the area or at the very least ask him for rumors and try to get him to spawn one for us if at all possible so i wish to ask you something uh yes can you tell me of any events or news but unfortunately he's telling us about igram the devourer and well i think he's already on the map i haven't heard about him for quite some time and i haven't really seen him around so i'm not entirely sure whether igram was defeated but I don't think so somehow. He's very strong indeed. Okay, so that's basically all we can do with Duke Alamar here. I can't take any other knighthood order quests. I mean, technically I can, you know, I could take the challenging task, but I've always found that to be kind of a... Mm, not a particularly good task because it just takes a huge amount of time and generally gives us a huge detour, uh, mostly, and it makes it kind of difficult for us to really do what we need to do and that is of course hunt down Qualys gems and everything and so I'm gonna try and see if there are any vassals in Salian. Oh there seems to be someone over here and uh, yeah by the way you, you probably haven't seen my wages in quite some time have you but anyway we're losing 7,500 every single week which is pretty bad but every single piece of loot that we get usually gains us about 10, 15,000, not each piece of loot, obviously, but every time we sell usually gets us a pretty decent amount. Anyway, ooh, there is an army of enemies near Seven Cross Keep. If they decide to attack my castle, all hell is going to break, you, break loose on them. Yes, if I could speak properly. Anyway, let's go and speak to these guys. And we're going to ask them for any events. Okay, what's this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think that's actually about anything in particular. Mm. Ah, Kjaradan Castle only has 310, and it seems like the Kingdom of Salian is... Ah, yeah, they are they are besieging it. They are besieging it. Okay, just had to make sure what was going on there, because it, it said Kjaradan Castle has been besieged, and Kjaradan Castle has been awarded. So I was like, what? They've awarded it to Duke Brennus? No, they actually haven't. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, that's nothing. Nothing to worry about there. I'm just going to try and make sure that I can speak to them in order. Ah, Ithil Randir. Hmm, yes. He's making all those all those humans pay very dearly for interloping and so on. Ah, Cure to the Ravager. It would be kind of nice for Cure to the Ravager to respawn if at all possible. But uh, according to one of you in the comments, as soon as you speak to one of these guys and, you know, actually hear about one of the unique spawns, like Warlord Zolkar, for example, then it will appear on screen immediately in a text form of some kind, and it will be like, Warlord Zolkar has appeared, and so on. But, uh, yeah, that doesn't seem to... Ah, Sila Uzas, that would be... Oh, he would be uh, pretty good to take on, I think. I don't think he has extremely good units, or maybe I'm getting mixed up with the Alaric fellow, because Alaric generally... Oh, there, there he is. <laughs> yes, he generally tends to have a peasant army, and uh, that would be very easy for us to deal with at the moment. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, wow, look at our relation with King Ulrich right now. It's doing very nicely indeed. Oh yes, by the way, I did eliminate Lord Shade. He was very close by to Kelradan Castle beforehand. And uh, yeah, that's what he's congratulating me on at the moment. Okay, so what else do we have? Warlord Ithelrandir drew his bow and slew a fully armored knight with a single arrow. Oh yes, I'm sure he could. Very much so. Okay, so let's have a look and see what they're actually doing here with Kelradan Castle. I suppose I should probably help out. Maybe I should speak to Lord Andre. Andre, get back here. No, it seems like he's he's currently pursuing someone, but hopefully I can catch up to him beforehand. There we go. What's this? Ah, they're talking about Ithorandir all the time. I don't really need to know about Ithorandir. Thank you very much. But I was actually thinking, you know what? Should we go and besiege something by ourselves? Because right now, the Kingdom of Salian is easily 
going to be able to take Caradon Castle back. I don't have any doubts on the on that matter at all. Singalian slavers have a pretty large army right here, and I would be able to rescue quite a few prisoners from them. But I have basically a full army, so it's basically pointless. Whoa, they do not have that many units here. And they have a lot of prisoners as well. They have 70 prisoners. So if we do end up losing a huge amount of units, it's actually not even a big deal. All right, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to place my Salian Halberdiers all the way down somewhere. And we are going to just let all our other units go in there. Rangers of the Clarion Corps, Larian Sentinels, and so on and so forth. Anyone with a really good shield. And we're going to just go straight on in. I think Anson's also... Oh, dear. It's a siege tower. Yes. Uh, yeah, I really did not want to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead... Hello. Ah, <laughs> oh, that fellow wants to attack us. Yes. Well, I'm going to just go around... I'd like to attack him, actually, instead. Or him. Any Anyone that has less than 150, please. That would be kind of nice. But, yes, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scout out Savador Castle. I feel like Savador Castle might be a better idea anyway, because if it is awarded to us, then it's just a stone's throw away from Seven Cross Keep, and that is, of course, our fief. So, generally, trying to reduce the Deshar's territory, considering they have expanded pretty nicely into Empire territory, might make sense. And me taking a town at the moment? Hmm, I, I don't know whether a town would really be advisable, personally. Wow, there are 51 Shadow Hunters here and 32 Shadow Wolves. Yes, I'm probably not going to be able to take that. Let me actually just take a look and see whether it's... Oh, it is a Ladder Castle. Uh... I would have liked to have taken that, to be honest. As I say, that's a, a very good position for a castle to be in. And let's have a look at some of the other areas here. I just don't want to go in to a particular fief and then just get absolutely murdered, you know, six ways from Sunday, basically. So, yeah, it would be kind of nice to avoid that. You know what? Do you want to do you want to see about Ethos? Let's let's see. Let's see what the garrison's like in Ethos and maybe we'll actually be able to take that. Let's have a look. Knights of the Radiant Cross. That's literally all they have that I'm kind of scared of there, I feel. Uh, the Ghazi stalkers obviously are pretty good. But I think otherwise, I think we might be able to do this. Should we try? We do have 6 in engineering, so it will take only 8 hours. Maybe we should have just stuck with the siege tower. All right, so our ladders are done, and we're now going to... Ooh, they're coming out. Okay, well, this is this is very interesting. I'm going to get out my bow immediately here, and we're going to just, uh, well, uh, apparently almost die, because the Radiant Cross Plague Wardens are going to do so much damage. They really are going to deal so much damage, but I am going to have to get out my bow nevertheless, and we're going to have to just try and do our best to headshot every single enemy that I can get my hands on. Oh, yeah, ah. Uh, Yes, I remember that. They have, uh, well, the developers have done something to prevent extreme amounts of loss to the enemy's, well, shall we say, to the defender's garrison upon spawning in, and that is to reduce the amount of arrows you have available to you. I don't know whether that's actually the case when it comes to your own archers, but from what I can tell, it seems like everyone's fine in terms of the amount of arrows that they have. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to prevail here, but you can see that I feel like we're losing quite a few units. But if we're able to succeed in this battle, which I very much hope we will be able to. I mean, our Larian Sentinels have much more DPS than the Radiant Cross Plague Wardens, but they have such massive damage that they are able to eliminate quite a few of our units without really trying too hard. And they have very good armor as well. You can see here. Mm, how are we doing? It's 15 against it's 15 against 15, 15 against 14, 15 against 12. Our DPS is winning. Yes, our DPS is actually winning. Very nice indeed. I think that's actually a victory. If this is a victory, it's a very costly one because we just lost 45 units to the Grim Reaper, no less. But it is going to get us a huge renown boost. Which I'm pretty happy with. I'm pretty happy with that. And let's just actually take a look and see what we've actually lost because maybe it's not going to be anything too bad. And uh, maybe it will be okay. So can I retreat now or... It hasn't told me. It hasn't given me the victory victory message. Oh. What? 
Do I not? Do I not get? Uh, do I not get a victory message? Well, we eliminated 150 from the garrison there, which is pretty good. Why, why did I not get a victory message, and I didn't get any renown either? What? That's a bit of a cheat, isn't it? Ah. Oh. Oh, well, never mind. I, I guess I don't really mind too much. We have a pretty large battle size as it is, but I am going to need to go to Seven Cross Keep and replenish my numbers. So let's actually just go over there and do that real fast. It seems like there's a... Oh, wow, there's a war party coming after me as well. So I suppose it was good timing. Oh. Oh, my. Okay, I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised about this. After consulting with the peers of the realm, King Ulrich has decided to confer the marshalship on you. You may decline the honor, but it will probably mean that you will not receive other rewards for a little while. Note that so long as you remain marshal, the lords of the realm will be expecting you to lead them on a campaign. So if you are awaiting a feast, either for a wedding or for other purposes, you may wish to resign the marshalship by speaking to your liege. I'm gonna say yes. And we are now the Marshal of the Kingdom of Salian. I am very surprised. This is going to be extremely lucrative for us. We can take all of our vassals over to where we need them to be. And that means we can tackle unique spawns. We can tackle heretic armies. We can do all of that stuff under the guise of we must eliminate these heretics because they're in le in in uh, uh, what should we say in allegiance with the Tashar. Hmm. Yes. That's so totally the reason why we want to do that, isn't it? Anyway, let's see if I can maybe uh, get a couple of people here. We're going to just get some Pendor Armored Bowmen. We have a huge amount of Armored Long Bowmen. That might make sense, actually. Let's just take a whole bunch of them. There we go. All right. So otherwise, that means that I will be able to tackle Unique Spawns very easily, as I say. So, uh... Ah, I actually have nothing to eat. Well, that's not very good, is it? Okay, well, I guess what I'm going to do is we're going to go in here, hopefully buy some food. I actually did buy some food at Laria, but there was such a small amount of it, it didn't make much difference. Okay, so let's sell all of this. There we go. And then we are going to speak to Sir Alastair, and we're going to say, As Marshal, I wish for, I wish for you to send a message to the vassals of the realm and start a new campaign. There we go. All right, did they... Uh, Oh, they're, they're still attempting to take this. Are they still attempting to take this? Has it has it been taken, or uh, they seem to be coming over here? Okay, so they are they are believing me when it comes to following me by the looks of things. Okay, so did they actually do anything? Because it seems like King Ulrich was defeated. So I'm not. No, they apparently did not do anything here. That's very strange. I don't know why they would have done that, but. Uh... Well, I, I, I guess we can uh, we can go into Keldarn Castle ourselves, but uh, for now I'm going to be ending this episode off here. I'm going to wait for Anson to return, and I'm probably going to hmm, I'm probably going to end the campaign actually, allow them to go about their business, and I'm going to go and buy some more food so that in the next episode we can do a little bit of an extended campaign, and we can try and go from castle to castle to castle, maybe even a town. I think Ethos would probably be. Pretty, uh, pretty eligible for capture, so we might try that as well. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.